a long time ago. I made this a long time ago. Graduated from Emily Carr in 2000. You know, and you have a graduation exhibition. I had two works in the graduation exhibition. This is one of them. And this actually hasn't been in an exhibition since that time. And you get that, you somehow you get this message that you're not supposed to show your student work. Like, where does that come from? I don't, you know. Anyway, heck, you know, heck with that, right? Um, this is an important part of my making history. Um, I was thinking about the uh, Indian Residential School uh, at the time, and I, you know, for many, many years, you know, it was really, um, thinking and feeling deeply about this um, school system uh, and how it harmed our, our indigenous people in Canada and America, you know, these places called Canada and America. And you know, you're a young person, right? You're looking, you're looking to find a way to be yourself without apologizing, you know? You're looking to see where you're reflected in the world, you know? To see something that represents you, uh, it's so profound. And coming to that space uh, from this history, right? Indian residential school, they don't, like these kids had no pictures of themselves, right? The only day that they would have pictures of themselves was if the government was there to evaluate what was happening at the school, right? This is part of many, many folks' experience and the survivor's experience, you know? Um, and all the things that, you know, I lived with as someone who is connected to that, this intergenerational residential school, survivor, family, like living. When I found this image of our, of these young girls from our community, I was so excited, you know? And it's from a long time ago, like 1900s. And at the time, um, at the time there was these, uh, these images of our people were made into postcards for sale. So this was a postcard. Um, and I, you know, I know now that the, you know, I, these young people have names, they're connected to family, that, you know, they're connected to community. And when I was making this artwork, you know, I was really so excited that I saw somebody who looked like me, right? And I put this line here, right? Not because I want these girls to be in that bit, that kind of building, but this line is kind of like a pathway. It also represents that 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 these buildings and the people in these buildings did perpetrate harm, you know. And that's important to acknowledge. And then what was very important to me was this gap, this gap here. Because, you know, and I didn't understand this at the time, you know, I'm 23 years old. <laughs> uh, I didn't understand this at the time because, you know, that gap, you know, there, that feeling of that gap is so difficult. There's an edge to it, right? But you still pick yourself up. You still make things. You still learn how to sing. You still uh, listen to your mom. You, you still, you know, go visit elders. Like, you, you do the things. And absolutely every single one of us you know, we're, as indigenous people in this place known as Canada, now known as Canada, we're, na we're navigating that, right? 
And what you have here underneath is, uh, it was of course a knitted blanket. And at the time, many, many years ago, my sister, my older sister Kathleen was doing a practicum. She graduated from the Knife Tap program at UBC. And um, in Dees Lake, and we were, Mom and I and Kathleen were staying in our grandma's trailer, taking care of grandma, you know. Nobody used the word Alzheimer's at the time. We didn't know that word. Um, but there was something, you know. And one day we decided, Mom and I decided with grandma's permission to clean the house, like, and in the closet, one of the closets was this bag filled with these knitted squares. And uh, when I was a kid, uh, I learned how to knit uh, because our grandma knit, you know, she had a lot, she had a lot of grandkids. Um, and she was working through something dementia wise, Alzheimer's wise. We know now it's that. I feel like I'm saying that word way too much, actually. And um, so she would knit and I would knit. Maybe we wouldn't talk, but our knitting needles would talk to each other, right? And so we're in the trailer, there's this bag of knitted squares and mom says to grandma, Peter likes to knit. You should give him those squares. He can put them together and make a blanket, right? And uh, so she said yes, and, and for many years afterwards, I had them in a bag, you know. And it wasn't until we, um, in Surrey, BC, uh, we were helping um, a community member, uh, her name is Mary Lux. Uh, um, she's Sakaya Denna from, uh, from a place now known as Vanderhoof. And she was recovering from a surgery. She had a brain cancer. Anyway, she she said, I'll put them together for you. Right? So this is before I graduated Emily Carr. And when I put this on the wall uh, for my graduation exhibition, I realized that I didn't I needed something that was also loving. So I put this blanket behind the, this image, you know, and you can see it through the gap and it spills out above and below. Um, and I hope it uh, also helps people to see that there is, there's always something underneath, um, something more. Sometimes it's hard to see that, but it's there. <laughs>